Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Thursday. It's July 26. This will be our chart lesson for today, and this will wrap up our week. No chart lessons on Fridays, so um, but we'll be back Monday to start another week. The weeks just keep flying by. Um, mostly sideways today. This did have an up have an upward bias early on, and then we had a downward bias the rest of the day uh, pretty much once we went below this e, below the EMA here and continued making lower highs you had a downward bias but up until this point here it really had an upward bias so but it, you can still see it swinging above and below the EMA and generally you can trade that both ways if you get a setup but you need a setup so um, there's not a lot of them in here but uh, need to say up you can see that we got the upward bias here and pretty much a little bit downward here and but still sideways really all day we really stayed within the overnight highs and lows this is a range day basically in the big picture but i don't want to confuse people sometimes that confuses people when you tell them this is a range day and basically we couldn't get outside 28 whatever this high is here we couldn't we, we actually broke out of it one time and instantly failed and sold off and we never went below the overnight lows. And when that happens, that's, and you're swinging back and forth above and below the EMA like that, that's generally a range day. So uh, keep that in mind. And that's that's a good way to know if you can trade it both ways. If it's swinging back and forth, as long as it's in a pretty strong, a fairly strong trend line like this, I'd probably say you'd only want to go with the trend. But when you're you know, you can see we got outside of it several times before we finally reversed here. So we really got our first break here, and you had two legs up. And you would think that's probably the end of it, but we had one more push up, and then that was it for today. So they evidently wanted to run these stops up here, and guaranteed there was a lot of people that got long up here above that, and then off, you know, they trap them in there, and and off it's. And that's why this is such a big sell-off right here. A lot of people were long. Probably a lot of them got long in here. There were probably a lot sitting up here because there's so many trading strategies that teach you to buy a breakout to the high side or sell a breakout to the low side when really you need to do just the opposite. And so there's probably umpteen number of people with buy stops up here above the S. And when it went and it shoots up, and those traders just get sucked in to the wrong side and then when it starts falling quickly they got to exit and next thing you know they're gone and you can see how that rockets down a lot of selling went on to run that back down real quick like that so but anyway let's back out we'll talk about the trades and we'll wrap up our week when i came in we've been trending slightly upward to sideways you can see how flat that ema is there we've been going but there's still an upward bias we're making higher lows and for the most part higher highs here so that's still an upward trend but you could trade this both ways if you got a good setup something you wanted to trade but really the first um, you know seven o'clock's right in this area right here and you might have thought about going short there but there's not a lot of room back down to that trend line so i wouldn't i wouldn't go short there but i like going long there just because it's a right off the key entry point nice bullish bar there's two swings there so even though you don't really see a second entry, there's a hidden one there. So if you wanted to go short there, you could. Uh, I'm sorry. So if you want to treat that like a second entry long, you could. It's just understand that it's hidden. It's not really a perfect setup. So I'd like to see a real, you know, I want to see it break higher there and then turn down. But either way, I like that trade. Nice bullish bar right off the key entry point. Two swings down. Just go long right there. And you can see that a lot of the smarter traders will wait for a little more clarity. And so then it tries to go lower one more time and gives you that second entry. Uh, this was probably the better place to enter. And if you were already in, I wouldn't be afraid to add on. If I wasn't in, I'd probably get in here. But notice what happens. It pushes up and turns down one more time and gives you that failed second entry short and then goes higher. So I'd be okay with jumping in there again. And notice that that's a new swing low it's lower than that one or that one and so that's a first entry second entry so i like going long there again or adding on again if you want and off it goes and that would have been a 
uh, and it actually went lower here and turns and goes out this side so if you would went long on a stop one tick above that or even let it break higher and drop a lemon order you could have got filled all the way back probably all the way back in there someplace i'm not sure how far i can't remember how far back that went but uh, you could have gotten at least a couple of three ticks into that bar. You probably could have got filled. Well, actually, you can see where it closed. It closed all the way down here at the low. So you could have gotten filled all the way down to at least where the close is on that line right there. And then if you anywhere under there, you'd have been able to catch a runner and ride that all the way up. Now, this is really clear, this channel here. I never drew the uh, measured move if you put that up there you can see that's basically a measured move so if you measured that and moved it up there that would have given you a place to exit but i still think this was just a single tier and we just had a big overshoot but if you do get an overshoot always measure you know get you an equal distance and put your next line up there and look for something to happen around that line but anyway we sell off real quick and i don't see a good enough signal bar that would make me risk that with this short-term trend line working up through here that never got a close we finally get a close it tried to go higher twice and failed and it is it does confirm that short-term trend line coming down but that's a perfect doji for the most part uh, it is a second entry counting off that low but you don't have a lot of room back to this line and you've got this support across here too if you could get in that and have enough room to get out, you might take that. But with that being a doji, you know, a lot of times it doesn't matter if it's a trap. But we're just going too sideways here. Uh, and we're right in the middle of the high and low swing. That's kind of no man's land, so I just stay out of that one. And notice we come down here and we, we continue to try to get lower. And then we finally break below. If you draw this down here where the two lows are, you can see we one tick lower and then it reverses. And we actually got a close outside that trend line and a new low. And that's the first break of this trend line. So I'm going to go long right there and hope that we run up for at least a, a retest of the high. I still like this better right there. But I just wanted to show you that that was that little one tick. And this one was real tempting, but you don't have a break of that trend line. We had a big overshoot here, possibly. Uh, we're already going sideways with, you know, you got one, two, three matching eyes there. It's not worth trying to risk getting long yet. Wait and see what happens. And then, of course, it does right there. And you actually get a failed second entry short here, but you've already got a close outside. There's not much room to a new high, and you don't know what's going to happen. It didn't even make a new high, and it turned down. And this looked like a little spike in channel. Uh, maybe that's not right. Maybe it's Maybe it should be up here and be more like that. Either way, you still don't get a uh, a new low there, but you get a higher low uh, here right at the EMA. So you might take that trade. It's not ideal. I would have at least liked to see it break lower and or either uh, pull up here and, and close, you know, bounce off the EMA rather than being right into the lower side. So I think you're better off to wait, but there's some reasons to like that trade. And notice we push up, pull back. Then we push up again, pull back. Now you got a failed second entry short. You're still bouncing off the the trend line and the EMA. That's that's double support. That's you got confluence there of those two. Notice that bar is very neutral, where this one's nice and bullish. So I like that one. This one you may not have got in. It would have come back here and filled you but it never filled that little gap unfortunately so you may not have gotten in there notice it comes back here and fills it then some before it takes off again um, but anyway I like that trade if you can get in it your chart might have been slightly different and of course we just keep working up and now we got a new high and so you got to be a little careful with longs now because you've had a close outside at least two legs up and we're not getting back to the upper side here we're coming up short so you can see it losing momentum and but notice what happens you come down first entry you move down second entry and you get a nice bullish reversal bar and really you had that low and you tested it once you test it again it's a little bit of a double test uh, so you got a little bit of room back to the EMA and when you know when it's going sideways like this you just don't stay away from the EMA very long it's gonna come back 
And so when it gets away, those are usually good trades. So I mark that one. Same thing on the other side here. Notice that it pushes up one more time and you got a big bearish bar. Look how far away you are from the EMA. Look how flat it'd be. And we're probably coming back at least to the EMA if we don't reverse here. And so I like going short right there. It's a little bit aggressive because generally you want to wait on the lower high. And look how it pushes right through the EMA, comes back, and you get that lower high right here, but that bar's too bullish. It's not a true reversal pattern. If that would have been a bearish bar, I'd probably tell you take it, but uh, you, I just can't justify it on that bar. And then you get your second leg down, and it tries to go higher once. And again, there's a failed second entry long right there, but... You've been too far away from the EMA. It's, it's not really touching the trend line again. I just think that's too risky. But when it tests it again, um, I like it a little better. But still, you got that. Now you got a doji. But now it tests it again. That's really a double test of that level. And that is a huge bearish bar. So what you might do, you could just put a sell stop there, hoping you got enough room. You want to be aware of this support area here. So you need to know you got enough room to get out before you enter. And so well, there's a couple of different ways to do this, and we'll, we'll talk about it here. Can't get my line right. But anyway, I wouldn't go short below that one. But this one, I'd let it break below and maybe drop a limit order. You might try back here one tick below that one. You wouldn't have got filled, but at least a tick or so back in there just to make sure you got enough room to get out before here. In this case, it doesn't matter. It went straight on through, but you don't know that's going to happen. Notice how it didn't go very far before it bounced, and that's, you know, that's why I tell you, don't listen to these trading gurus that tell you to sell breakouts on the low side or buy them on the high side because you see they failed both times. Even if they're going to continue on, they'll usually fail and come back temporarily. So don't fall for that buying and selling breakout stuff uh, with the the move you know you want to you basically want to do just the opposite and so um, it does shoot on down turns out to be a pretty nice trade just make sure you got room to get out there that's what I what we talked about and then you get a failed break lower here you actually had one here but you don't really have a convincing close outside this and this may push on down and test the overnight lows so you, you need to get weight on a higher low or at least a a good setup. That's a real, that's a fairly big bar right into the trend line. See how big that bar is right there. That bar is six, so it would take exactly eight ticks. So you could get in that one within the rule, but you'd be right at it, and you see you would have gotten burned by doing that. I would want a, a little either a little better setup. And you end up pushing down a little further, and of course that bar is huge, and then you don't break above it. You got three matching bars, so you got to ignore that. Notice how it broke out, pulled back, and then went higher. You do have a higher low here. It never broke lower. It's right into the EMA. It gapped over. You probably couldn't get in that one anyway, and it runs up. And then when it comes back, it pushes back through the EMA, and it can't close. You get a lower high right here. Notice how it break, and you're looking for a retest of this low. And notice how it broke higher and then turned. I'm not sure which way it went out first, though. I really have no idea. I'm guessing it might have went out the low side, uh, out the high side first, and then turned down. But I don't, I don't know that. So you'd have to watch the replay if you didn't, if you don't remember either. But I'd probably skip that one regardless. And then when it tries to break higher again, and everything's below the EMA, and you get that nice bearish bar then you can go short again just make sure you got enough room to get out we've actually pushed a little lower so this is probably the more important swing low but notice what happened here it actually bounced at the at that line again so that that support resistance is still important And you got to make sure you got room to get out. So you may let it break lower and drop a limit order a few ticks back and see if you get filled. And then it bounces right there off that line. I'm not crazy about that one. It's a little small bar and it's mostly bullish. 
but there's no real convincing close. This is this might even be more like this. Let's see, see how it fits on the other side. That's how you can usually, and you see that's that's probably it right there. And so I just don't think you want to go long there. If you get a double test, maybe, but notice when it comes back here, it pushes on through. You don't get a double test. But it does come back up here, and it tests this high again. And you can look at this as a double test. You made the high. You basically had a double top. You tested it a few times here. Then you come back and test it again. Nice bearish bar. And this is a first entry, second entry. And this does look like a tighter range again. So I like going short right there. That's a. It takes it a minute to go, but that's a quick, easy move down. And that gets you into the 2 o'clock hour. So it was relatively straightforward today. Uh, it could have been a little confusing in here. But you got to remember, you got this working down. This is a fairly strong sell-off, so you're you're probably going to try to test that low again, and it does, and then it just keeps going sideways until it breaks lower and fails, and then breaks higher and fails. And uh, if you don't learn anything else today, just make sure you remember that on these breakout levels, always, if you're going to enter, you probably want to fade it. Fading meaning if you break out the high side up here, you want to sell it. That's a fade of the what everybody teaches to buy up there. You want to sell. Same thing down here. Everybody teaches to sell on a breakout down here. You want to fade it and buy it. So that's my, you know, if you don't learn anything else about ranges, make sure you understand that because that's key. If you, you know, if you aren't, if you're not going to fade the the trade don't do anything at all just wait and let it prove itself and play out and but don't you know don't go with the what 90 percent of the stuff you hear taught out there is, is to buy on the break higher or sell on the break lower it just i mean doesn't mean that it won't it, it'll work occasionally doing that but you know i've shown you over and over and over that's that's the low that's the low probability. That's the losing strategy. We want to go with a winning strategy that's a high probability. And if you don't, you know, if you can't trust it, go study some charts and watch what happens on most breakouts. Even if it's going to continue on, it will come back and test the this breakout area here. And notice it, it, it came back all right. It never even checked up. It just the bottom fell out of it. But that's because all these longs are exiting. They realize what's going on and they got to get out. And then it just starts going sideways again. So. And so guaranteed, this is probably stop running. They pushed it up there, ran those stops, and then sold it off. And that's what they like to do. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up for today. Hope you had a good trading day. We will uh, be back again to do it Monday, but I'm done for the week. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.